This was never, they never had this song when I played the first time, like when it first came out. Yeah. I guess it's the director's cut. Oh, okay. Or the dad director's cut is what it's called. <laughs> I see. How's it gonna be? How's it gonna be? What do you mean? You don't hear the ad lib. They go, Dream Daddy. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Oh. Have you played this game? Uh, no. Don't forget the floss. Dad tip. Thanks, Dad. Should you be Amanda? Oh, God. Dad? <laughs> Dad, wake up. Um, morning person. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Dad. Yikes, Dad. Breath. Go brush your teeth. Yikes, Dad. Breath. <laughs> what? I don't know. Bad breath. Dad breath? Whatever. Don't judge me. You have to read the tips. Yeah, I drink water. Dad. Ugh, wow. it's like What are you gonna do, huh? What are, what are we looking for here? You can't ask me, I'm your daughter. <laughs> oh. Um, I'll just try to make... The thing is, it's like jacked and then like starving. What's the first one? Hair. And then, oh, oh, I can take off hair actually. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, what's the difference then? There's, there's a fucking crop top. Is slim, that just a difference? Slim tank bud, slim binder bud. Are you slim? Uh, uh, uh I'll just be a slim tank bud, I guess. Um. I'll keep that on for now. Really? Why? We'll see how it works. I have facial hair right now, so... Oh, so you're trying to make yourself? Yeah, I said I was gonna try to make me. Mm. What the fuck? <laughs> I think the last one you chose, yeah. Or this one. I like that one better. Which one is? The little poof. Yeah. But you didn't choose what I picked. But I, I guess this, it's up to you. I said this one. And then you said, yeah. I said the poof. It's your hair. <laughs> Why would you say ew? That's this is closer to what I have right now. Okay. You're much poofier than that girl. Filipino nose.
Wow, those lips. Where's my fucking eyebrows? It's annoying. <laughs> How about you change the lip color? I know what you look like, but I'm not gonna say it. Wait, what? No. <laughs> Are you saying this doesn't look like me? No, you do. Well. Oh wait. You don't have the. They don't have available facial hair for you. This one. That really. I might just stick with a regular t-shirt, honestly. I mean, yeah, you seem... You're a regular t-shirt guy. I kinda like this, though. It's... Hell yeah. Alright, go for it. My hair's bothering me. Yourself a bun. Ew. <laughs> kind of like this. Be bald. Thing. Yeah, I think that fits you better. If you want to go like in between both of them. Did I get rid of my uh my five o'clock shadow? No. I look like I, fucking, don't know. I look like a psycho. I look like a murderer. You definitely look like a drug dealer or something. I look like. I don't think your five o'clock shadow is that prominent. That's... That's a drug dealer right there. <laughs> what kind of lifts do you have? It'll be 50 bucks for, for detailed for what? explanation. <laughs> Is this fun? Well, yeah, if you're satisfied. I look like a fucking dickhole. Well, that's just what you look like. Looking good, daddy. Name that dad. Daddy makes. <laughs> Shut the f ew. What? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Do dog. <laughs> Like this? Yeah. Okay. Be that dad. I only played like maybe an hour or two of this game. Like back in college. <laughs> Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done. Wow, we I do think. not look. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> You're not my dad. You don't know who I married. I could be adopted. You could be a mix. Oh shit. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. Hmm. I said wait, straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, <laughs> I see a bunch of old photos in little fo photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Oh, you get to choose. Wow, not you being straight. You had to come out somehow. The only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween, when you were made before? <laughs> oh my god, the dragon costume. You couldn't decide being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess, dragon. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. <laughs> Seeing yourself in the dragon's, in the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Hmm. Right, yep. Definitely repressed on memory. And this was you and your horse phase. Aww. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Ah. I don't think that was his... Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. Ouch, kid. The ska communist manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad. That's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Emma P is a fucking loser. Honey, I promise <laughs> you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Ugh. Dad, Emma R. R's been my best friend since I was seven. Give it like a little bit of effort. All right, Emma P was the one who. Wow, that's so mean. Sleepover. I mean, this is probably the worst, or the least uh, bad out of the, all of these. I... The first one, you're stealing people's pets. The second one is pr a crime. Well, the first two Anyways. are crimes. Dad, that wasn't me. I did that. See? Right. Oh. Oh. Hmm. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P. Huh. And maybe Emma peed herself. She never told anyone, though. Through Blue, that Emma R. Emma P sent for Emma Pood. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R. Later, she'll get a kick out of it. First photographer award you've ever won. Yeah, and they got us a twenty dollar gift card to McFridays. Hey. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blast. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Ugh. Dad. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you though. You don't look like a dad. I keep saying that. <laughs> Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Mm. 
Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long time. I finally decide to break the silence. Nah. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right there in the parking in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender. But of course I was freaking out, and the little lady who crashed into us was freaking out. And I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen her, she says. It's okay, it's all gonna be okay. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Hello, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Eh? Eh? Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hmm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Huh. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? Cool. We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. <laughs> and there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. What's this, what's this photo up here? I'm gonna guess that's her. I'm gonna guess that's my fucking mistress. Memories to make and stuff to break. Yeah. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave behind. To leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rear view mirror. So... So what? Hmm. So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful, scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Uh... Multiple places to sleep. That's probably the most useless. I'd like a washer and dryer. I guess. Honey, have you ever heard of, er, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. Well, worry about that no longer, as our new place features machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly thereafter. Hmm. An upper class luxury, I fear. Luxury? The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats upstairs, sweetie. Anyway, it's almost it's also smaller than our last house. <laughs> Cozier, one might argue. Cozier. Cozier. Good spin. Yes. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool cool stuff that we can walk to? So I don't have to waste gas. And I mean trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not gonna happen, Pop. Pop, Pop. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Oh. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. Eh? I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Don't you dare. Senior. Hmm. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. Huh. <laughs> 
just gonna ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's been that's blocking the, the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pops, cool your jet. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay. You're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. What is this? We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale uh, sign is still in the yard. Yeah. And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, Sweepy. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Oh. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. <laughs> An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's, it's 10 a.m. We need to unpack. No, don't. As much as I would also like to enjoy delicious and healthy ice cream sando right about now, we got work. We got work to do, kiddo. And we need to make it snappy because there are five sealed crates of DVD box sets blocking off the bathroom, and I gotta pee real <laughs> bad. Well, don't let the entire cast of all thirteen seasons of Shark Tank, but with actual sharks, stand in your way. Let's get to it. Don't smoke. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some more uh, good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? Oh, I walk shit. over to the door and open it. Hello! <laughs> a handsome, clean cut <laughs> man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm M. That's what my name is. Hmm. I saw the moving van and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know that she baked uh, them herself. Oh, he's Joseph not your type. Joseph leans in and whispers, but between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for the cookies. Oh, Amanda disappears with the cookies. Mm. Amanda come and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. <laughs> Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, <laughs> I meant, don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Uh, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely uh, aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm playing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> we shake hands to seal the deal. Hi. I slap him on the ass. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp <laughs> on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. 
Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Yeah. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down on the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Wink. Wink. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Even he knows that I don't look like a dad. And with that, Joseph's <laughs> yeah. gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those uh, cookies go? Uh, they're gone. I'm sorry. Yes. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? What should we do? I want some coffee. I'm feeling a little sluggish and coffee seems like the more responsible option than just taking a nap. I'm proud of you. Good tire pressure is essential to optimal mileage. We walk down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Yes. Man, this, this is in such convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. <laughs> What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not a, he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal zone. Huh? God. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there's in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Ugh. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. <laughs> the music is kind of loud. Put that fucking thing back down. Nope, not loud. <laughs> the inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Hey. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's uh, it's kind of dumb. Oh. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. Hmm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time. And I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable. The more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now and I can't stop. Hey. Mm. So what'll it be? Hmm. I scan the chalkboard menu and am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... <laughs> yeah. Chai? Mm-hmm. Chai. Spicy. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> he fucking loves me. <laughs> Spicy. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Die Ant Word is a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their uh, evocative imagery and hyper stylized music videos. Their music is as catchy as it is disturbing. Evocative. I'm doing the thing again. Oh. But coming right up. Hmm. And for you? Have a macchiato de Marco, please. Hey. Coming right Bless up. You. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? <laughs> uh, medium. Wait, is biggie smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt says to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyway. Hey. Hey. 
This guy was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy, but not comfier than our couch. But it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. <laughs> Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and the guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. He should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside. And also, don't go outs- Wait, what? And also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See? We're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. <laughs> Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I am Amanda, and this is my dad, Abby. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Hey. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're gonna have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of uh, Amanda nods vigorously. <laughs> she knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that banana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commen commensurate with a... Uh... I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. <laughs> I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Thanks, the secret ingredient is bananas. <laughs> so, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's, grateful banana bread, right said banana bread. Uh, these are awful names. I like banana bread Kennedy's. Yeah, BBK. Oh. You know, like the punk band? Uh -huh. I thought you said you only knew dad band puns. I'm a hard dad. Huh? That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? <laughs> Yeah, banana bread Kennedy's. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. Okay. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming <laughs> out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey, dude. Hey. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Oh. See, it sounds oh. good when you say it. No, Across it doesn't. The <laughs> Actually. A man catches my eye. He sits by himself brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Fresh air? Time to soak up all that vitamin D, make our bones nice and strong. Yeah, our our skeletons are gonna get so strong they're gonna hop right out of our bodies and crush cars with their bony fingers amanda i already have an irrational fear that my skeleton will, will one day escape this flesh sack and run amok please don't encourage it right sorry uh to the park which is also next door everything is Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Hmm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroll over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're onto you, baby. 
We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow. Jeez. A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Oof. A corgi with a neat black handkerchief <laughs> tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. I like your necktie. Ruff. It runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with its nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Pet the dog. But where do I pet the dog? Head rubs. He seems to love a good head rub. All smiles here. You definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. <laughs> you know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. <laughs> oh, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. But I'm fine, thanks. Uh -huh. ah, I'm just mess messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm M, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda. Not only do you find her sitting on the ground rubbing the dog's tummy. Hey. Wait, let me see her. Hey. Huh. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Ah. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? <laughs> Ten. She's a precious little youngster. Uh -oh. Precocious? That was. Ah. Whoa. <laughs> My natural dad and. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no, it's happening. What? Oh. Go on, Daisy, tell him about yourself. Um, I. That's my girl. <laughs> Amanda, get in there. Okay, okay. What the? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't back out. I don't want to use this. Uh. You have no choice. Spelling the photo. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy's getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be our third win in a row. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Ooh. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang. My high school doesn't have a chess club. Or a computer lab. You lose 10. <laughs> I shouldn't have- I shouldn't challenge her smartness. What is this? What is that? Can't switch daughters. Amanda is your only daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. What about the art? You know? She can't be fucking artistic and smart. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of your drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute. It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding onto it. Brian loses 10. You regain 20. Ooh. Daisy sold <laughs> enough candy bars. This year to get the top prize, a canoe. We're taking it out next weekend. How's that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose <laughs> 20 HP. What? <laughs> what the f Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Oh. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Statewide. I'm dead. Yeah, you are. Band-aid. With a flourish, you produce a band-aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. 
<laughs> oh no. What are you doing, Dad? Being a protective parent. Anyone would agree it is an unusual gesture. You lose 10. Oh man. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy? Amanda's was potty. Wait, what? Oh, Amanda's is potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. You lose 10. I don't have shit. <laughs> You're losing, dude. Dude, they... Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. <laughs> Daisy here is all... Has, wait. Has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together yeah. to hide her teeth. It's extra powerful. You lose 20. Oh, I'm dead. Dude, you're about to lose. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about her having skip a grade. Oh. Even Amanda kind of bristles at that when you lose 20 HP. Dang, he's really got his beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Uh, did he have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? Fuck this guy, man. Well, you suck. Fuck you. Nice freckles, idiot. So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Oh. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? I'm pretty sure that yeah, you can't bro, win that you're, battle. You're, you're feeling so insecure. What a lovely place. Oh. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. I'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy will- the dog is ginger, too. <laughs> Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Max while happily tra uh, trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Hmm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Hmm. <laughs> Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not only to minor in horse creative writing. Too close to the truth, Dad. Uh. Let us never speak again of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts uh, by Amanda Dog. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. All the sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. This character isn't me. Oh. As we're walking home, I hear heavy hoof, uh, footsteps coming up behind us. M. Bro. Hey. I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar oh. face jogging up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro. No. What? Not Craig. <laughs> oh, what's we were just talking shit about Craig yesterday. Oh. Bro. Oh. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Huh? It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, <laughs> this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello cute baby. Hmm. Oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say uh, hi, River. That's a nice name. River. It's like River Phoenix. Yeah. He picks up her Aww. tiny wrist and waves it around. R River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. It was like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Hmm. I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. 
How's Smashley doing? <laughs> Ashley. Oh. I mean Ashley. Ashley is her name. Wow. She usually, or she's actually still going by Smashley. And now uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, wow. I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacet, copacetic. Mm -hmm. Twins? You have three kids? Mm -hmm. Ain't life something, bro? Right? Kegstan Craig hell? is a father of three. Huh? Kegstan Craig? Hmm. Oh, yeah, it was my old college nickname. Look at fucking River. Got a bubble. He got it because he, he did a lot of keg stands. Hmm. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Oh. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Uh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You daily jog? I jog yearly. On January 1st? Or, on January 1st. When I promised myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Oh. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. <laughs> All right, sure. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially him, himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, I, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. <laughs> I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. Hmm. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I am. I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Hmm. <sighs> Too bad we're gonna be putting myself right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Hmm. Oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit and te I'll text you every day and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Alright. If you get art school, I'll stay for the dog. Oh, she's going to art school? Don't do that. <laughs> Is that what it's gonna take? Medium sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, and I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm gonna wait. Oh, you like lagged out. Say that last sentence. Yeah. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Huh. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college... <laughs> Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's just like my entire feature and not a big deal. Ah. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. You have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah blah blah. Um, we... <clears throat> Her face drops. I regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put the experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine, really. Her face has the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and I, before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Ugh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? She's more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Ah. Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Uh. <laughs> Boss man's been riding us proles too hard. It's time to rise up for our rights. Hmm. Dad, you're not even gonna invite me to the riot? I'm sorry, sweetie. It's an honest day's work for an honest day's riot. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Uh, go to bed. I'm wiped. Have fun with the Emmas. Okay. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Vega. Mr. Vegeta. <laughs> yep, totally remembered. <laughs> I'll be there. Awesome. Bye, Pops. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. The rise and shine early birds still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Smiley face. Hey, we're work. Oh, right. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? What is 6 a.m. anymore? <laughs> Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Oops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Oh, hey, no. bud. Still want to get your soul on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Yeah, let's fuck it. Let's fucking do it. Yep. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep <laughs> on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait. I don't remember falling asleep with the blanket. Amanda must have tucked oh. me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes that I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Mm. Hey bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you man. I'm wearing my suit and, and uh, button up to the gym. I'm definitely not as pup pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Mm. Ready to kick some butt? Help. <laughs> this is it. This is how I die. Mm. Uh oh. He didn't like that. Uh, it'll be alright, dude. Oh. We'll, we'll ease you into it. Hey. 
We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half, and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. Oh. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They oh look God. like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Mm -hmm. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a good place to be, walking. So, I know we're on treadmills. Nice. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Oh. Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. It might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building bus uh for building bustle mass. Bustle bass. <laughs> I watched the dude in a muscle teeth flexes as a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine I think was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is uh -huh. that guy doing that to himself? Oh. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Uh, training to crush people's skulls with his thighs. He's he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh. Those were eggplants. Oh, that had... Yeah. <laughs> Those had the eggplants and the... The, the and cummies. The no, don't say. <laughs> no, it was sweat because they're at the gym. What's the eggplant for? For fiber. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Nice. A couple years. And what do you do when you're not? dadding or working or buffing oh. oh i coach my twin softball team that still counts as both dadding and buffing hmm. uh i keep busy what do you do for fun <laughs> ah. uh... the goal is to live with as few worries as i can muster the lost shaker of, the, of salt was a metaphor hmm. a metaphor about what about not being able to shake salt onto something. Oh. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force <laughs> draining through every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? <sighs> no. Okay. I don't like this story. <sighs> oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at this party, and you vowed to make me feel better. You'd tell me to create a distraction, so of course I'd do a sick egg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I... Ugh. Try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Hey. And then you drop the fish, and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to me, post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands. They scooped off the ground, and you're yelling <laughs> at me that we have to leave. Hey. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And we get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was was grim. And the next day he's alive and well. Yay. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, <laughs> Dude bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and <laughs> just imagine what that looked like. Craig offers me a hand and looks over, uh, looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym, gym adventure here. Oh. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright, well, here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. Hmm. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Bro. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Dang. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. 
I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm. And now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. <laughs> I get home and lie down on the couch. It starts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's house. Wait, what? Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Yuck. Let's get this day done, and I call it. Okay. I, <laughs> I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They gave me a bright orange visitor sticker and sent me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Uh. Ugh. Come on kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, you're gonna help <laughs> me out or not? Uh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss them. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that <laughs> low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Ugh, fine, Mr. Vega. Ah. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 what minutes late. The... I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Oh. You must be him. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and then I take a seat on one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and J.D. Selinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he bows, or where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm. <laughs> the whole class erupts in laughter. What a Alright, alright, everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit down. Hmm. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer that uh, the response question on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's uh. listening. Or not, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vega turns to me yeah. and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? I don't know. Both. <laughs> you know, budget cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Please call me Hugo. Uh, I don't normally do these impromptu uh, parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda is a very bright, bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Uh, Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. She cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I don't really chalk this up to sen senioritis, but. This is strange. I thought Amanda was all, oh wait. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <sighs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you can talk her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. Eh. I know how important art school is to her and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Ah. Yes? You ever catch that rye? Oh. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't even get a choice in that. He just flirted with Hugo on his own. Right. I leave the class the classroom. All this talking is fucking me up. I leave the classroom and make my <laughs> way out of the school. 
I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Eh? My tongue is starting to just like flop around. <laughs> yeah. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping? Gossiping. About me? Mr. Vega and I actually got just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. You talk about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Oh. I'm pretty hungry. Come. Grab some dinner. Sure thing. Let's go to the food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Uh, yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy anything? I'll buy you a thing, singular. Sure, sounds like a deal to me. Huh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what, kid, that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh. Oh, I'm fine, Pops, senioritis, and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. Eh? It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I uh, and I I Amanda. She's still texting. Just I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Dad. Uh huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. What the hell, is senioritis? Is that just like when you're a senior, you don't feel like doing anything? Yep. Did you know that like before? Like you're that yeah. Yeah, you pretty much like skip classes, not do your work. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Why would you say that? Yeah. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> Amanda keeps hell? texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Huh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Huh. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Oh, the lag is crazy. Yeah. Uh. Gross. <laughs> it's such a long section. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he 
he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, so you so you like him. Just say that. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Love good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall then. Mm -hmm. What? We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Amanda. Hi. Should I just oh, yeah. read Amanda's lines? Yeah, I'll continue. You, you falling asleep over there? No, I'm lagging. Language, Missy. Hmm. Heck yeah. Better. Hmm. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My head burns just looking at the menus. Nothing looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it. Or do you just want me to inject some fatty directly into your bloodstream? You're not lagging anymore? Not right now. I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Huh. She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious? Hmm. Yeah, we have to eat through the pain. We enjoyed the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, huh. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Ugh. Which meme? All? All memes. Ugh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. <sighs> Dad, it's complicated. The memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time I mean gets to you, Dad, all of us, all us youths have already done the joke to death. Ugh. <clears throat> and what's worse than that is, is that movies and TVs and video games will try to jump in on a meat train. But just based on how long it's done, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Ugh. Dad, please. Ah. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to the goth store? Hmm. <laughs> what? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chains wallets and it's basically an assault on people? On what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s? Huh? Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one. Yes. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. Beach. Amanda. 
teach speech. Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate uh, an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and dog had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. <laughs> After begging her father to take her to death, goth, and beyond to buy a rainbow suspenders, yeah. she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Ah. Amanda's move, she begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey, chain wallet. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Goth and Beyond. The band t-shirt. I barely know any of these bands. Cannibal Bone Party doesn't seem like music I enjoy. But they uh -huh. must be really happy that a retail outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. Look, what? this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Huh. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian. Edwardian dressage. Dressage. You want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? <laughs> Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would seem that I've outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strong worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. <laughs> The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian spider or Edwardian in nature. Mm. Huh? You say that? No, I'm liking. Huh. The man that trots up to me with it a t-shirt. Huh? It comes and goes. Amanda, man that trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hmm. Hey, Dad Tron 5000. Yes, I'll buy for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda pops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien, he is in here all the time, he's obsessed with the Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Elam and Flint Dogbone, the twin bro uh, brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost... The ghost then got control of the truck. I can't, st I can't steer on them there. Wait, what? I can't steer on them there. Damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Hmm. That's because we are about to die. You. <laughs> this is art. Right. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Kellum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road, ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. 
we can stop here. Okay. Did I save? Maybe. This auto saves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cookout. The save is called Cookout. Oh, boy. Okay. Well. <laughs> Let me hear the song. Who's gonna be your dream? <laughs> what do you think is the most attractive? I'm not sure. Just pick one. Uh, maybe the teacher and the restart? The teacher and the barista? Is that what you said? Yeah. You like the dark skinned gentleman? Yeah. Nice. Who's your, who's your pick? Uh, Craig and the... The fucking... The, uh... Ascot. Dude, not ascot. The fucking sweater around the neck, dickhead. Oh yeah, I and the barista. Like him too. Yeah. Okay. Till next time. Bye.